All right, welcome to this short series of videos uh, about mental math and estimation in Singapore math in grades two and above. First thing I want to talk about is the kind of the why of mental math. I know this is, uh, as adults, something that we didn't get taught, or at least I didn't get taught a lot uh, when I was coming up through elementary school, uh, mental math strategies. Um, I was, in fact, a lot of times being forced to put things down on paper um, and show my work. Uh, the reason we teach these mental math strategies uh, is kind of a philosophical um, idea in um, a philosophical principle in Singapore math and that is that these mental math tips and tricks of how to uh, successfully and efficiently manipulate numbers in your head is n shouldn't just be reserved for the kids who like and get math. I came up with my own tips and tricks when I was coming up uh, in school because I liked math. But one could argue that the kids who struggle in math, uh, you know, need these tips and tricks even more than the kids who just kind of get it. Um, and so we really try and explicitly teach them. Uh, it is also a source of some frustration uh, as parents because it's going to look really different to us. It's going to look like it's more complicated than it needs to be. Um, but hopefully some of these videos will take some of the mystery away from that and uh, explain it. Another critique I hear a lot from parents about Singapore math in general uh, is, you know, why are we making this so complicated? What happened to the old stacking two numbers on top of each other and adding them up and down? Uh, and I, one thing I love about Singapore math is stacking two numbers on top of each other and adding them up and down is, in many ways, the most efficient strategy to come uh, to an answer. In the case of 724 plus 516, uh, you know, putting the hundreds on the hundreds, the tens on the tens, and the ones on the ones, and adding and regrouping is the most efficient way, arguably, to solve this problem. Um, and, and we always end up this is where we're headed in Singapore math. We, we teach this uh, algorithm, the same algorithm that we always learned. And uh, before we do so, we talk to kids about uh, what each one of these numbers mean. This four is really four ones. Uh, so we could think of, you know, four of these guys here. And we use these manipulatives with them so they understand what the number 724 really is. It is also made up of two tens, two tens, four ones, and seven hundreds. So we, you know, create, have them be building uh, out these seven hundreds. So uh, we do this stuff first. We start in something that might look a little bit more complicated than um, what we learned in school. But we always end up with this efficient strategy. Along the same lines, this mental math and estimation chapter uh, is saying, you know, sometimes there is a more efficient strategy than stacking two numbers on top of each other and adding them up. I don't know if you've ever seen your, one of your kids or any uh, child or even adult take a, a problem like 200 plus 100 and, you know, we dread as teachers uh, when kids uh, grab a pencil and write out two zero zero two hundred plus one zero zero one hundred zero plus zero is zero zero cents plus zero tens is zero tens and two hundreds plus one hundreds is three hundred so my answer must be three hundred where we're looking at the thing saying two hundred plus one hundred is is 300. It just is. Um, and really, this is one of the things that we are teaching in mental math and estimation. There is a better way to solve this problem than write it down on paper and show your work. Uh, and we teach that explicitly. It does get a little bit, um, might look a little bit different to us as parents, although that sounds like, hey, 200 plus 100, 300, that's a good thing to teach my kid. Uh, when we make them write it out and explain why, that can look a little bit tricky. And I really um, you know, appreciate you watching these videos so you can help them um, figure out uh, it's kind of using the same language and the same strategies that we're using in school. Because we do make them write this out a little bit, um, but the, uh, just to make sure that they understand where these numbers are coming from, where the tips and tricks are coming from, and then our ultimate goal is to just have an efficient strategy to solve this problem. So that's really the end goal that we want to keep in mind. Um, just a quick preview of what you'll see in some of the later videos. Uh, this one may seem pretty good, but 128 plus 30. Um, we would say in Singapore math, I n we hope a kid would look at this and say, uh, I know I'm not doing anything in my ones here because I'm adding zero ones. I don't have any hundreds, so I'm not adding any hundreds. So really, uh, the most efficient way to solve this problem instead of writing it out and you know going this way would be to say, well, 20 plus 30 is 50, and 50 plus 108 is 158. Um, so that, you know, when we write that out, it looks a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. But again, hopefully these videos will help you uh, understand a little bit more about it so you can help at home. A um, couple things I want to show you before we get started uh, that you might not be familiar with. I showed you a little bit of these place value blocks where these represent the ones. 
Uh, this group of ten ones represents the tens, and this re represents the hundreds. This is something I'll use a lot in these videos to explain uh, to you, and we use to explain to the kids what these numbers mean. Um, you know, really starting at the conceptual level for what is a hundred, what is ten, what is one, um, and you know, what does this number look like, and how do we manipulate it? So we break this out and actually build it in place value uh, blocks or base ten blocks, what they're often called. Uh, so that's what those are, uh, and this is something that unless you have been really familiar with Singapore math may look pretty foreign to you and it's called a number bond and the idea behind a number bond uh, is that I can put three values in here three numbers uh, like eight five and three for example this part of the number bond is called the whole and these two are the parts and you have a successful number bond um, if you, the two parts add up to the whole. Uh, so 5 plus 3 is 8. So this is a, you know, a good number bond. Now, we could also say, and we do say in kindergarten and first grade when we're studying numbers underneath 10, that there are so many different ways to break up 8. We could do 4 and 4. Uh, we could do 6 and 2. We could do 5 and 3. Uh, and any of these would be correct. And in mental math, um, there really is a kind of a best way or a most efficient way to break up numbers, and especially numbers over 10. Uh, and that is to break them up in by their place value. So we would break up 12 into 10 and 2. This is the most kind of efficient way um, to, to manipulate these numbers by kind of isolating the 1s and the 10s. And if we were in the 100s, you know, taking the 100s out as well um, to, to break the numbers apart and manipulate them in, in a kind of an easy way. Uh, so again, this is called a number bond, and uh, that's how you use it. So I hope that's a little bit of an overview of why we're doing the things we're doing in mental math and estimation. Um, stay tuned for more tricks and tips that you can help your kids with at home.